Hey everybody, Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach, and today I am coming to you from the, let's see, what did we read? The third oldest town in North Carolina. This is called Beaufort, North Carolina. It's a, uh, a beautiful little fishing town. Stephanie and I were in Oriental yesterday, and we came down uh, probably about 20 miles more of the intercoastal waterway. A lot of it was slow, uh, going through a couple little uh, canals, I guess man-made canals and then there were um, sailboats that we pass and and when you come up on a sailboat you come off a plane and you you talk to them tell them you'd like to get a slow pass and you go down to about seven or eight miles an hour so we're not kicking up a wake and you go by the sailboats and um, and then when they're clear and they're in behind you you can can motor on again but it's a beautiful little town gonna um, show you what we're looking at so this looking out the bay you can tell we're a very windy day this is actually uh, this is actually small craft advisories. You can see the, the old eagles and the carver flag are blowing. But this is the beautiful uh, little marina. A lot of the boats are out of the water. I guess they got winter down here, but there's a lot of fishing boats. And um, we had a big fishing boat right next to us. We had a big fishing boat right next to us here and they took off early this morning. There's a big old boat over there. <laughs> Look at that yacht. And um, let's go down here to the aft deck and show you this. American flag is blowing like crazy. We had a couple uh, sailboaters for neighbors right there. And uh, good morning, Anita and Ed. We had a couple sailboaters go out and I helped them go out because I mean, this wind is like probably about 14 or 15 knots right now. And it, as soon as you cut those lines, your boat goes everywhere. So let me go back up here, and sit myself down in my captain's chair. Ugh. But what a cool town and um, you know, this is a this is a work day. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is when I do my client work, and I have um, I had uh, about a half hour free right now, and then um, we I blocked out a little bit longer of a lunch break. I usually block out uh, noon to one. I blocked out a little bit more today because Stephanie and I, you know, we don't just want to sit at the dock, so we're going to go into this uh, beautiful historic town. Whoops. There we are. Oh my gosh. So we're going to go into this beautiful historic town. Good morning, Roger. And um, check it out. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be an amazing place. Um, but the title of this this week's uh, not this week's title. Uh, rewind. The title of today's uh, Facebook Live is called "Your Leaky Bucket: The Leaky Bucket Theory and Fix Yours Now." I wrote about the leaky bucket. And um, good morning, Peg. Hey, Peg. I was thinking of you this morning. By the way, I had somebody uh, reach out who's. Uh, said they've been following me a while and bought all my books and, and they were in North Carolina and wanted to come by and meet me. And I said, I said, hey, Steph, just like Peg when we were in uh, Solomon's Island. So anyway, um, thank you, Anita. Thank you so much. So we're going to leave, um, speaking of sailing. So our goal, so I work today, tomorrow, and Thursday. We have uh, our second group mastermind call for the Dream Business Mastermind and Coaching Program. One week early because the following week is Thanksgiving. Can you believe that? Can you believe it's like the middle of November and next week is Thanksgiving? Holy smokes. So anyway, um, and then Friday, assuming the weather's good and the wind's not too horrific, Stephanie and I will head south. What we're thinking about, by the way, and I'll get to the leaky bucket theory. What we're thinking about, by the way, is uh, we are really, really close. I mean, like probably less than a quarter to a half a mile as the crow flies. There's my niece, Jamie. Good morning, Jamie. Is we're gonna, um, we've been doing the whole intercoastal, but we're thinking it's still cold, man. We're trying to chase some warmth. So we're thinking of taking the floating home out into the Atlantic Ocean and putting the hammer down for about 100 miles and really make some progress. Probably get to the southern part of North Carolina, if not possibly to South Carolina. Well, I'll just have to see how far we can get. Um, so, so anyway, we're gonna, uh, we're going to do that on Friday, but let me get to the leaky bucket theory. Do you know that um, every business, large or small, whether you're a small solopreneur operating out of your home or whether you're a giant business like you know General Electric or Apple or anything like that, every bucket, every business is like a leaky bucket. So I want you to, here's a good picture. I want you to picture a, a, a metal, could be wood, doesn't matter, but I want you to picture a pail of water. The pail... The bucket represents your business, and the water in your bucket represents your customers. Now, as long as you've got a bucket full of water, which means your business has a lot of customers, you're going to be okay, right? But the problem is most businesses, 
Large or small, they leak. Their buckets leak. And so if you're a very, very, very well-run business like Disney, I know my, my niece Jamie's a fan of Disney. She has actually a nice, uh, nice little business helping families uh, visit Disney and do tours and make sure the vacation is all it can be. So my hat's off to her. But anyway, Disney is a very well-run company, but even Disney... Um, even D Jay Henderson, man, I'm at, Jay, is it because I'm in North Carolina you're here, buddy? <laughs> here we are in, in Beaufort. So um, Disney even leaks. Now, some companies that are very well run, they may only leak um, at the seams or maybe a couple pinholes. Truth be told, the majority of businesses out there, large and small, leak like a sieve. There's holes in the bucket. Now, what happens is as the water pours out, that's not just as lost customers, but I don't, I don't want you to think of it as just lost customer, but what I want you to think about it is every time you lose a customer, you're losing all the future revenue and future referrals that that customer could generate. So it's not just one line on your mailing list, you're really doing some serious damage to your business. And so the strategy, there's two strategies to keep going if you have a leaky bucket, and you do. The two strategies are you need to pour more water in the top of your bucket, that represents customer acquisition, and the other one, which I like even better, is plug the holes in your bucket. Boom, plug every hole and keep the customers you have longer. Speaking of Disney, it's not that Disney doesn't have a marketing budget, they do, but you know, you never see commercials on TV for Disney that say, hey, you know, we have a great theme park, oh, we're clean and, and come back, and you know, it's, they're not promoting that. The budget that Disney spends on what you would call marketing uh, is all about retention. So they put all their money into the customer experience. The parks are phenomenally clean. The people are unbelievably healthy. You never, almost ever see a piece of trash. They do everything to make sure the experience that you have at Disney is so unbelievable that you will come back. And not only will you come back, you'll be like a raving Disney fan, like my, nep like my niece Jamie, and you're gonna bring people, you'll refer people, See, that's the other side of marketing. Most people say, oh, let's just, let's just put up a billboard. Let's do Facebook marketing. Let's do Yellow Pages. What the hell are Yellow Pages, right? Let's do this, that, and the other thing. Let's spend a ton of money and get some new customers in. What you really should be doing uh, is taking a portion of your marketing dollars and allocating it toward the retention side of the business. Now, here's the deal. I just got a reminder. I got a call coming up in 10 minutes. So here's the deal. If you want to um, grow your business, you need to spend more on retention. You know, um, Dan Kennedy, my, my greatest mentor by far, said, um, if you wanna sell more of your goods and products and your services, the first people you turn to are the people who have already, what? Proven themselves to be buyers. That's your current customer. So you wanna market more to your current customers. So that's the leaky bucket there. If you wanna read more on that, that is in my second book called Stick Like Glue. How to create an everlasting fans or customers so they stay longer, spend more, and refer more. I just got the tagline wrong. Anyway, it's, it's called Stick Like Glue. Oh, how to create an everlasting bond with your customers so they stay longer, spend more, and refer more. Very good, Jim. Well, so that is it. That's your lesson for today. The leaky bucket theory. You got a leaky bucket and you need to fix that. What's Sonia saying? Any suggestions for retail small business? Many hate. Oh. I, so, Anita, I'm going to give it to you straight. Retail is dying. And um, there are people like me who who like to support local business. I mean, that's one of the reasons we like this small town tour that we're on. I go in and I shop local business. I want to give you an example, though. People like convenience. They will pay more for convenience. They'll pay more for service. As an example, uh, let me turn the camera on real quick. I'll give you this. So, you see this... Uh, this thing right here, this ramp, I had to buy this ramp so I can get blue off the boat. Now our other dog, Toby, who we had to put down, Toby was 37 pounds. I could pick Toby up and I could lift him up on the dock. Fat, you know what, blue, well, that's wrong. Blue is just a big boy, big bones. <laughs> and um, he weighs about 77 pounds. I can't pick him up, very bad back. And besides, even if I did have a good back. Hi, Phil. So anyway, Sonia, when I got the boat and we, or when we got blue, I needed to get a ramp so he can climb up and, and depending on the tides, climb down into the book, into the boat. Schnitzy, yes, Phil. How you doing? Oh man, it's a boy. It's the old, uh, old boys network. Good seeing you, Michael. And, um, 
I went to the local pet stores in the town I lived at the time. This is back when we had our house. And no, we didn't have it. No, we didn't have it. No, we didn't have it. Could you order for me? One pet store took the time to at least look it up. And they said, yes, I could order it. And it was about 20. They quoted me like 20 or $25 more than I could find it online. And I was almost okay with that. And I said, good, when can you have it? And he said, oh, it'll take about three weeks. And I, le I left. And I went home and I ordered it online and it came in three days for 25 bucks less to my front door. Anita, my point is retail, the problem with retail is that, and I get this, it's pretty hard. We must be on a fight, flight path, got a big plane going over. So and retail is getting very hard because if people do want to go in and shop, if they want to go in and shop, and experience and buy now, a lot of stores aren't stocking as much. They're trying to keep their costs down. I'll tell you the other problem with retail, not to turn this into a retail bashing, because I, I have a huge background in retailing, is when you go into a store and you get somebody that doesn't even greet you, let alone within 30 seconds, how about within three minutes, and you feel abandoned, then, then the person who does finally get around to you doesn't know anything. It's a bad experience, so we could go into more. I'll tell you what, there's, there's two books of mine that you might be interested in, Anita. One is Stick Like Glue. It's all about retention. And the other one is The Fastest Way to Higher Profits. There's uh, 23 different chapters, each one a lesson in how to uh, boost your profits. And, and many of those have to do with retail. Okay. So uh, you're welcome, Anita. Thank you. Okay, folks, that's this, uh, this episode of Facebook Live. I, I've got about six minutes. I've got to go down to my office and do another coaching call. But I uh, wanted to come up here and show you where we are. I'll give you one more time for the people joining us late. This is our home. We got, what do they call those? The big boy sport fishing boats next door. We're in this tiny little marina in Beaufort, North Carolina. You can see from the old Eagles flag and the Carver flag, the wind is pretty strong. Looking over on our port side, we got a beautiful yacht and another marina across the way. And that's the big bridge we came under as we came down the intercoastal waterway. We have no neighbors out the back today, so we're out here all by ourselves. But uh, life is good on the floating home. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day. We plan to make the most of it. I hope you do too. My name is Jim Palmer. I am the Dream Business Coach. And um, connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, by the way, you want to join uh, my, I got, I got a new Facebook group. It's public. It's called Build Your Dream Business Now. Uh, the link to it is dreambizgroup.com dreambizgroup.com go there and join us we're building a lot of momentum I'm going to be doing a lot more in-depth training at this group for free so dreambizgroup.com you join I got to get going now it's telling me I got three minutes take care everybody